Welcome to ANN In Depth, a podcast that explores powerful stories of extraordinary people. In each episode, we bring you in-depth interview with leaders who have lived through remarkable experiences, sometimes overcoming adversity and always achieving great things for God. Today, we have Vyacheslav Demian. Vyacheslav, welcome to ANN In Depth. Thank you, Sam. It's a pleasure to be with you today here. I have first met you many years ago. I think it was here in this building and then later in the Ukraine right. when you were the head of our television network uh, in the Ukraine. Hope Media Group. Hope Media Group, which is a collection of, of all efforts of communication in the church in the Ukraine, pretty That's much, right. right? So tell me about yourself. You were born in the Ukraine. When did you accept the call to ministry? Tell me about your story. Let's start there. Well, uh, yeah, I was born actually in a, in a country that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, it's Soviet Union. And um, that was a just completely different reality. Uh, we were isolated from the world church. Um, we were persecuted. We didn't have freedom to preach or even to have religious books in our homes. So my first Bible, actually New Testament, was confiscated by KGB. Um, actually, it was on my first trip outside of Soviet Union with my father in um, 1987. Um, we went to Romania because we had some relatives there. And uh, to get out of Soviet Union, to go somewhere, you had to, you, you know, today to travel, you need sometimes visa. Uh, but in that time, you need um, um, like approval or, or, or uh, visa to exit the country. So it was very difficult, but finally my father got this permission to get out of the country. And uh, one of the main goals was to get some religious books because we didn't have, you know, Bibles and uh, other religious books. And so we were so happy we could get a Bible for my, for my father, um, New Testaments for me, my sister, my cousin, and a great controversy in Romanian language, which was a big blessing you know, to have it in the time. And on the way home, we were on the train um, in the night, uh, late in the night uh, on the border. We passed Romanian border. And then when we came to Soviet Union border, they actually found it. And they confiscated everything. Oh. All our luggage, everything, because that's that was the rule. They confiscate everything with with whatever you have there, Bibles or religious books. So your joint turned into mourning. Yeah, yeah, but but also we didn't have freedom, religious freedom. Also we were um really going through tough time because you know when I went to the school six years old my parents told me hey we can't speak for you there because if we will say that you will not come on sabbath to the school immediately kgb will take you out of the family because parents educate in the wrong way you know so if you speak for yourself then then you fight for your for your belief or for your relationships with Jesus, but we can't. So I started my my first conversations in the school, like first day, with uh, my teacher, being a small boy, you know, that I will not come on Sabbath to the school, and they try to, you know, manipulate and to push and to you know different ways. But um, yeah, um, my parents couldn't do that because uh, they could lose me immediately. But uh, when we when we gathered on Sabbath, not in the church, only you know, in church home home churches, let's say sometimes in our home, sometimes in other um, homes, um, what we what we believed, what I was taught, that 
the gospel will be proclaimed in all the world, and then Jesus will come. So for me, for all of us, it was clear if there is this prophecy from Matthew 10, 24, then Soviet Union has to collapse. There's no way. Because if Bible says the gospel will be preached, it will be preached. So when they pull us out of the train back from to Soviet Union from Romania on that night, I remember they um, they interviewed my father all night through the KGBs. They came from the city there and they you know they tried to find out all the connections you know just. You know, they wanted to find out who is the leader of the church, who are pastors, and you know, just to catch them. Um, and um, I was standing there in a big hall, um, cold hall, granite everywhere. You know, these big Soviet buildings, and these big guys, officers, Soviet officers, were walking back and forth. And I was like looking like that, and I thought, well, these guys, they, they have power. But I thought, you have power now, but we will have power, power very soon. Soon we will have the power, because, because this system has to collapse. I was eight years old at the time. That's a very interesting experience, because you have <clears throat> the impossibility of a system collapsing that is exercising tremendous power over you, but your belief in the scripture mm. is what uh, guided... Prophetic word. Your, the prophetic word is what guided your understanding of those events. Mm. Today, you are the vice president of Hope Channel International, an organization that has um, 80 channels right. worldwide in different places. Actually, that's not quite accurate because you have 80 centers of production, 80 mm. organizations that... Organizations, production organization centers is, more, actually. Yeah, it's it's probably... And, and you have some organizations that have... Some hope channels around the world have mm. multiple TV channels That's in right. multiple countries. Right. So we need to find... A, you used to call them affiliates. Mm -hmm. Now you no longer call them affiliates. You call them channels. But right. I don't think you're there yet. There is there is a progression there right. in the nomenclature. Right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Either way, hundreds of millions of people can be reached through signals, yeah. through television, web, radio, um, that Hope Channel uh, operates. We've come a long way from that train ride. Mm. How do you feel leading, um, in many ways, this final proclamation to the world? with more freedom now in different parts of the world and less freedom than ever in other parts of the world. Right. How do you see now this macro world? You've just came back from a world tour, different parts of the world. Tell me more about that. Oh, you know, Sam, um, I'm, I'm thankful to the Lord for the experience I had in my childhood because actually it um, shaped me as a fighter for Jesus, for his kingdom. That's how I see myself. That's how I see it in the past. And uh, now um, there is the only value there is reason to live for is kingdom of Jesus. And this is what we try to do with the Hope Channel, to enlarge this kingdom. And um, you're right. Um, 80 channels doesn't describe all the magnitude of the work of Hope Channel around the world, of Ch Hope Channel network. But um, even now, coming from Europe, from Africa, I can see that God is, God is at work there. God is doing miracles through Hope Channel International. God is preparing the world for the second coming of Jesus. Yes, these are very different continents. In Europe, you have one envi environment. In Africa, you have a completely different environment. But in both both places, in both continents, I see these passionate people for mission. Um, they are very creative. They are very um, 
professional. They uh, do their best to catch the attention of the audience that is distracted with some, you know, so many, so much noise, informational noise, to bring them, bring them to Jesus. Um, for example, in Germany, they developed uh, hope centers, and these hope centers they look great. You know, for example, one we visited is on uh, in German language they call it Bahnhof. Bahnhof is train station. So the train station now is not um, as needed as it was in the past because of digitalized world. So actually, in the former train station, uh, they have the hope center, hmm. and across across the the street actually or the square there, um, there is a church, Adventist church. So it's a great it's a great example of how it should work. You know, we have Adventist church, Adventist church brand there. But then we have extended arm, Hope Center, where they would uh, invite people. And to everybody who goes uh, on the train, they would stop there. They would see the Hope Center, a nice facility. And they would have their different um, activities and Bible studies and, uh, you know, building relationships. Um, and it works in many parts of, uh, of Germany. And um, I'm so happy to see that in this secular country, uh, they 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 have these creative ideas and very bold vision, and what is good? It's not that Hope Channel in Germany is doing this themselves. No, they just kind of you know license the brand, uh, but the church, the local church, is putting money into it already for many years, and they develop this Hope Center. They 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 actually provide all the activities there. In other parts of uh, Europe, we see that our channels, they are becoming the main religious channels in countries. Um, and the audience is growing, the impact is growing. Um, in Africa, um, we can't say they are, they are continuing net events. No, they, they actually escalated net events to, to different level, to just incredible level of what is a net event well that, that that's where they collaborate all together with um, um personal ministry uh Sabbath school department and uh, with um local churches with local hope channels and they develop strategies um to actually um, create events that are really attracting the audience to to come to the local churches so it will be broadcasted through satellite or internet um by the way not only in the churches but sometimes even in the bar you know where mm. people you know drink alcohol and so on and they have experiences that people who actually um the owners on the of the bars they became then adventists you know they had to shut down <laughs> their <laughs> business you know <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they do this they do this Biz, uh, sorry, business. Uh, they do these events in a way that it really attracts people. So they they, they have such a such a uh, you know um, well uh, prepared strategy with best music. They have even the motos, uh, motto or uh, or like um, uh, yeah, uh, like a song. This is like like they repeat every day. Like a know? theme, a theme, theme song. Yeah, theme mm -hmm. song. Yeah. Sorry, and uh, to get it into people's minds, and then that becomes yeah, think song so of this event, you know, and uh, and then they have uh, different activities and best uh, best singers and uh, and preaching the gospel is part of it, but they make it really a nice event that would add value to people's lives. It seems exactly. to me you're describing where the, the the web and where television, the web, radio, the church. Uh, the Adventist Church directly and and all of its related ministries right. are working together in one event. Yeah, and that leads me to ask the question: What is the relationship between the Adventist Church and Hope Channel and and other brands, but especially these two? Um, is Hope Channel just the the televised worship services that happen mm. in the Adventist Church? Does it have a different focus? Mm. Tell me more about that brand positioning architecture right. that right. we've worked on recently. <laughs> 
Well, that's uh, that's something what uh, we don't believe in evolution, but uh, it, it went through a certain process of evolution, but uh, not because there was a long time, but because there was Holy Spirit guidance, actually. And um, yes, in the beginning, for example, let me bring just a simple example. There was no need in dress code at Hope Channel. Like, why you need it, right? Because you just come to the Hope Channel as you come to the church, right? If you... If you have at Hope Channel like extended worship and, and service, church service, then you just come as as you come to the church. And there was no never a question like how to come to the Hope Channel programs, right? So this is for hosts and presenters. Presenters and even guests, you know. For them it was okay, I go to Hope Channel, what's that? It's kind of church service online, you know, on TV. And that was okay in certain period of time when it it developed it 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 uh it shaped its form to be more um evangelistic to be an outreach ministry but i'm so happy that through the last years in many parts of the world and now as we work with you and other leaders here at general conference we 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 came to the to clarity on brand brand's positioning of Adventist Church, where Adventist Church brand is here to actually um, welcome all the people who are interested in the gospel, who are interested in um, in um, in the message we proclaim as a church, who are interested in the church actually, and we should do everything possible not to not to lose these people, not to lose this context, because there, there's so many activities, great activities of uh, our health institutions, our educational institutions, schools, um, media ministries. And often there is, this connection is missing um, where we, we have to embrace these people and they have to know what is the next step, where to go, where is this community of believers, where they can be part of what they like and to serve others. Where Hope Channel is positioned to reach out to non-Christians, non-believers, or Christians and Christians to, of our other denominations. People who probably never know about uh, certain certain truths we 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 proclaim or never know about Adventist Church. That's our main goal, to reach out those who don't know about the beliefs we proclaim or Adventist Church. And um, let's take people through a progression. Here. Yes. So if if at one point, and I think this was the case at one point, Hope Channel's positioning was, look, we are going to set be set aside apart from the Adventist Church. Mm. And we are going to reach those that have some prejudice against the Adventist Church. Mm. And when they are ready to trust us, then we switch. So we're going to mm. give them programming that they're interested in. Mm. That's the bait. And then at some point we switch and we then tell them, you know, where to go and so on and so forth. Mm. But I, I'm not sure that ever worked, the bait and switch mm. methodology. Definitely in the 21st century, it does not. No. Because... There is, unless you are very intentional, there is no transfer of trust between brands. Mm -hmm. So Hope Channel now, as far as I understand it, and you correct me if I'm wrong, it's it stands as the first sort of cutting edge front lines of mm. awakening a spiritual desire in people. Right. So when you have programming that talks about finances, when you have yeah. programming that talks about health, health and talks about all of it, those family. programs are a way, a family and so on, a way to awaken a spiritual mm -hmm. desire inside people's minds, whether they're Christian or not. It's like, I need to... Th th that's right. That's right. Because we follow the Christ method alone. First of all, we have to take care of their needs. I mean, we can't skip this, 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 um, um, uh, we can't skip this part of building relationships because this is how Jesus um, served the needs of people and then after he mingled with them and served the needs only after that he said hey follow me now we understand that um, uh, there are two extremes one extreme when we when we just you know build relationships and ne never say follow me I mean in name of Jesus right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
But another extreme is when we say from very beginning, like you have to do this and this and this and uh, you know the rest, right? And yeah, we may say that, but who will who will watch it? Who will listen to that, right? We we can't we can't say oh we don't care about that. The, the main thing we say the truth, and Holy Spirit will do the rest. I strongly believe in Holy Spirit. But uh, it's clear that we have to be, we have to do our work from professional perspective as good as possible. We can't excuse with Holy Spirit work our negligence. And we again, we can't skip this strategy Jesus had, mingling with people and building relationships, taking care of their needs. Now, how you how you take care of their needs? You you have to know them. You have to talk to them. You just have to meet them. So you encourage your producers to 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 understand people, so that they can create programming that would really meet their needs. Right. Now let's make a distinction here because you and I are very versed with branding theory and branding uh, literature mm. and all of that marketing uh, world. It is true that any brand that cares for people's needs, wins their trust, and then tr sells their product, that they will sell their product more mm. than if they didn't care at all. Mm. Um, so there is a there is wisdom from even a marketing, secular marketing perspective to follow Christ's method. Yep. I have, on the other hand, Christianity isn't let's take care of your needs so that you experience this. Mm -hmm. In fact, it is so much deeper that taking care of other people's needs is the main dish. It is what we are called to do. It is Jesus. Do. It is impossible right. to be a disciple of Jesus and mm. not have an attitude to meet the needs of other people. So it's not, yeah. it, it's it's not foreign mm. um, to this process. You're right. We can't take care of their needs without Jesus. Yeah, and it's it, impossible it, to to follow Jesus without a desire to take care of their needs in the fastest exactly. way possible. So when a producer and their hosts are preparing a show for the family, for example, mm -hmm. the desire is really to help those families yep. deeply, you know, to, to alleviate the pain and suffering that is unnecessary that yep. they are experiencing, yep. because perhaps there are things that they're not doing that they should do. Mm -hmm. um, so there is there is a lot of practical programming that... Yep. that um, but all of this is placed within a spiritual context. Right. And at, at Hope Channel, we have four levels of, uh, we call them four levels of uh, different type of programming. First level where we have programming on values. I again, it's not that we can share values without Jesus, but we, we talk about values. And then we talk about uh, principles. Uh, it's second level. And third level experience what what you do to follow jesus what you do to change your life and fourth level doctrines so the the main thing is now that every channel in the world they have to identify what is the ratio you know of these four levels depending on the audience depending so they on have the strategy. programming for all of those levels exactly. but they define the ratio depending exactly on, and they they decide you know this program is here they are likely to stay and watch what yeah. happens after yeah and this also goes for all the digital Be strategies. Because we want to make sure that every channel is very clear on proclaiming the gospel. We don't want to have channels uh, that are only sharing values, you know? No, we want them to have values and principles and, and experience and doctrines. But mm -hmm. now, pro ratio, it's, it's up to them because they have to contextualize the strategy for, for their needs. And I think it is very important for us to understand that only being humble enough, we can be valuable tools in uh, Jesus' hands. What I mean by that? I mean that we have to recognize only Holy Spirit working through us can make us um, capable to take care of people's needs. That's that's not an easy task. This is why everything we do, we do in prayer, and we 
underline all this always this principle of being humble being humble in understanding of our limitations for example one of the limitations we have to admit we as Adventists we we are in kind of bubble um we are very we have very limited knowledge about the n- real needs of the people now how how to overcome that one of the things what we do we run studies so we we want to understand what people needs are what what is their pain in the last few years we established a research division for, right for analytics lack of a and innovation department for Al- that. analytics and innovation department and you've conducted a lot of studies to understand people to understand right. what they're watching what they're yeah. engaging yeah. with and, yeah. and what so they're on. interested and in, where they watch content and what type of content and so on but besides that it is important to invite those whom you want to reach to invite them into your programs as as guests and to talk to them you know it just changes completely the dynamics then people like them would be interested to watch this program you know because well they see oh there there is somebody like me and that's so important for hope channel that we understand that we are not only extended church service of adventist church we are the arm to to build those relationships to do something what we couldn't do within the framework of the church and framework of the church brand but that sometimes upsets our brothers and sisters i remember when hope channel changed their programming uh, entirely to fulfill mm. that um, that focus one of your one of your channels and my grandmother was rather upset mm. because now it was different to what it was before mm-hmm. and now you did not have a church service on a sabbath morning right. and she wanted to have the church service on a sabbath morning and she saw hope channel as the tv version of the church and now she wasn't getting it right and i had to remind her that it's okay grandma it's not for you mm-hmm. <laughs> it's it's fine <laughs> well but um, how is... do you navigate that do you know you've yeah. got you've got a church with 22 million members Yeah. It is their tithe and effort that is being placed into uh, the the this stewardship of the TV ministries. Yeah. who are now setting up channels all over the world and have been for 20 years. And the people who are sponsoring that mm. are now saying, "Well, but you're not taking care of my needs." How do you navigate that complexity? Well, that that that's a good point you don't take off my knees and my question is what are the needs of the adventists we are strongly convinced at hope channel that the main needs of adventists are to have resources and tools to reach out and this is where hope channel wants to be a good tool good resource where we want to make proud every adventist that they have a tool they can share with their friends neighbors you know um co-workers uh the message of hope through hope channel resources sharing a link or just uh, you know uh inviting home to watch a program together or sharing a bible study we want to equip our uh church and our church members with the best media tools for evangelism and uh we want to make sure they're proud of it how they give their tithe how they you know give their offerings that this money are used in the best way serving their needs are there other needs definitely but I hope Jana's not going to fill all of their needs <laughs> we we want to say humbly we can't we can't fill all the needs but one we can promise and we are working on this and that's our let's say brand promise for adventists mm-hmm. we will provide you the best tools for evangelism and we do this fantastic okay let's go back to the ukraine um you grew up at some point the soviet union collapsed in fact mm. it was 3 4 years after the train yep right But so that's true if my math is right that's right yeah 91 were, yeah you were coming into becoming a teenager but by then you had already determined a few things in your life that um 
if the majority of people are going in one direction, it does not mean it's the right direction. Mm. So you had this sense of, of this conviction mm. of following what God was telling you to do, which right. I see it to this day. One of the things that I most like in working with you, Vyacheslav, is your ability to disagree. Mm. You know, it is when we disagree. Same with you, Sam. And <laughs> it's yeah. like, let's struggle together until... Yeah. I do find that we are disagreeing less and less the more we mm -hmm. work together mm -hmm. because we are, we are helping to shape each other's uh, foundational principles of how we think right. and the philosophical framework we, we operate under. But there you were. When did you decide, I'm going to be a pastor? Well, people usually ask me, me, me this question, and my response is, I... I, I was never thinking about being somebody else as pastor. So it was just, <laughs> it was out of the question, you know. You don't so, remember the moment uh -uh. when you decided because you've always known. Yeah. And, you know, even in the Soviet time, I remember my father, he had a nice uh, suitcase with his uh, books and, uh, um, you know, books. Uh, yeah, books and uh, some notes where he would uh, write down his sermons and and he would travel with it, you know, preaching in different churches. And was I was he a pastor? Yeah, yeah, my father was a pastor. Oh. So this is probably I see. You know, something what shaped me as well. And uh, very often people came home to, and my father helped them, you know, in spiritual things and actually through their struggles. And this was a great example for me. So actually, I started to I asked him, "Hey, I want the same suitcase for for books." And uh, so he provided to me. Probably I was about eight, nine years old. And uh, later, when Soviet Union collapsed, you know, we had more freedom. And then I was able to to get some books because it was very expensive. Um, I mean, Ellen G. White books they were very expensive. Why? Because the way how we um, printed them was only manually on typing machines. And actually, my, my mother was one of those uh, um, enemies of Soviet Union who printed those books at home in the closet because you don't want your neighbors to hear the sound of typing because if they hear and if they say it to police, then, then you're gone, you know, in prison. You disappear. And 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 my mother did it with understanding all the consequences. Later, I helped her. So my first book I printed was uh, uh, Steps to Jesus, Steps to Christ. And and what and, you mean by printed is you went to the closet and and you right. typed. Yeah, but it was not an easy all of the words. It was not an easy job because it was manual machine type machine, and you would have ten to eleven. Um, sheets of paper, very thin paper. With carbon copies so exactly. that you could do multiple copies exactly. at the same exactly. time. Exactly. And then you have to know how 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 firm you want to to push, you know, because if you are pushing too strong, then then you penetrate the first two papers, you know. If it's not strong enough, then the last eleventh or tenth or ninth copy you can't read it, you know, it's not good enough. It's not imprinted there. So you, you want to have the uniform, you know, picture there um, so that every, every, every character is the same. It was hard work. And Sam, when I heard two or three years later that there is a printing machine where you can delete if you made a mistake, I was like, wow. You know, that was my dream. I, I, you know, they told me that it's computer, you know, but, uh, but for me, the main feature of computer, you can delete. Because if you make a mistake on, you, you remember, you have to, you know, to push every, with one finger, you know, every um, uh, letter there, uh, every character. And then on the end, you make a mistake. You have to start again, the whole Over thing. again. This is the process of copying the Bible almost, you know, that, that yeah. is described. But yeah. look. That's just like, I have to take a moment here to consider this. You locked yourself in a closet mm -hmm. to make copies of books using a typewriter machine. Yeah. And you are not old yet. And you have already artificial intelligence that can generate text for you. Mm. 
isn't it absolutely unbelievable that in one lifetime you go from these two yeah. realities? Yeah. And that speaks to the kind of change that we are experiencing in the world. But the main question is how to use all this for Jesus, for his kingdom. Because for me, it was media. And now people say, oh, you're working at uh, Hope Channel. It's a TV network. Well, actually, I'm not coming from media background. I, I don't want to upset our viewers, but I don't know how to edit. I mean, video editing. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm not operating cameras. I, I'm not a media uh, person from that perspective. I am evangelist. And uh, that's what I was actually. That's what I, how I entered in TV world, uh, having my evangelistic program on TV, secular TV in in, in Ukraine. And um, so, so in in reality, you're not in the business of watching films or or programs be made. You're in the business of watching lives be transformed. That's the point. And that's what you whatever about. whatever technology works for that. You know, I'm not married to technologies or platforms or I'm married to 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 the gospel proclaiming the gospel whatever it takes you printing in your closet with one finger you know through, let's go <laughs> let's go or using uh, artificial intelligence fine you know the the point is um god is giving us all these resources and tools but what he needs he needs um he needs humble hearts to understand that it's his mission it's not our mission and he is at his mission always. Jesus says in John, John chapter 5, my father is working until today and I'm working too. It's not that the mission was created for the church. The church was created for mission. And when the mission is complete, the mission will cease to the, the church structure will cease to exist because there is no need for it anymore. Be, be, because the main main goal of God is to save people. It's His mission. And you, what is important in understanding of of principle of missio dei of God's mission is that mission is not possible without sacrifice. That's the main point. Because for God to execute His mission put together a plan of salvation, it costed his, his son. It costed him his son, his son's life. Now, we, we have a great privilege to join him in his mission as people, to join him in his mission. But, but pick up your cross. But um, pick up your cross. It, it takes yeah. sacrifice. So you speak multiple languages, uh, German, mm. Romanian, Ukrainian, English. Russian. Mm. That makes you a phenomenal tool in God's hands because you have access to, to well, every time you learn a language, your brain functions differently right. and it creates new connections. Not only that, you have access to great theological works mm. in German, in the original language. Right. Um, you have Romanian that is also a very powerful language in, in how to express things properly. Mm -hmm. Um, and then Ukrainian, obviously, and Russian. Some of the greatest literature in the world was written in Russian. Mm -hmm. You have access That's to right. that too firsthand. Mm -hmm. And God led you through a series of events that guided you to, to this point where you are now, and he will use all of this as much as you are able to, to mm -hmm. give him. In the way you've lived your life, your son has now started to study to be a, a minister too. And he has gone recently to an experience where he preached. Yeah. And you were so happy with yeah. that. Tell me more about that. Well, that's that's what makes me really excited because <laughs> um, yeah, my son, Jonathan, um, he he was one year old when I studied uh, theology in Bogenhofen in Austria. And now 19 years later, uh, he went to Southern to study theology as well. And last year when he studied, um, he joined SALT program. Um, I am so grateful to all the leaders who initiated that program and who what is led. It? Well, that's, 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 uh, that's a program where they take young people and they train them how to go from door to door 
to to build connections to start giving bible studies and you know that's that's actually what shaped me when i was young you know going from door to door selling books and building relationships and uh, after that they had an evangelistic uh, program there and uh, these young people they kind of you know brought these people to the to the evangelistic program and uh, after that they invited them to go to Dominican Republic to be evangelists themselves and uh, and for me it was really exciting to see how how gospel trans- transforms people you know because i know my son you know he 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 wouldn't he wouldn't go and you know stand in front of people and preach but now i see he sends us videos and he's standing there and preaching so enthusiastically i was i thought wow that's that's a miracle of gospel you know and uh, <laughs> that's what makes me happy um yeah i don't know what will be you know his for the life and his decisions he's only first year there but uh, i pray god will continue using him for his kingdom this this uh, let me pull a thread that i thought of as you were describing this yatchislav you are one of the most innovative leaders in the adventist church in my opinion mm-hmm. and you're looking yes, at every new technology for the gospel but you're excited that your son is using perhaps the oldest technology which is the road and the door mm-hmm. you know he goes from door to door he knocks yeah. he builds relationships um i have noticed there is a disproportionate number of leaders who have experience co-porting or going from door to door it's disproportionate compared to those that have never done it mm-hmm. what why do you think that is do you think there is a a shaping that happens when you progress through those steps or, or why do you think that is well sam we are coming to the first questions we discussed to know your audience you have to know your people you want to reach it out you you can't you can't just assume that people are as you think they are you you have to touch these people you have to have this personal connection you have to mingle with them you have to understand their pain we we can't just assume that uh, uh they just need they just need to know this and this we'll just preach them and that's that will be fine that, that, that's not true uh this is why i wouldn't say that this is oldest this is still the oldest and the youngest uh way to build relationships to meet people and media is only the tool the platform where you again meet people you see in gospel in in build in building relationships in bringing people to jesus broadcasting doesn't work you can't broadcast the message God didn't broadcast the message. If, God, if you wanted... God communicated the message. And communication happens only when you meet people, when you talk to people. So always God communicated the message, but not just broadcasted it. And and if for God it was important to come down and to sit on the same table with sinners, how much more is important for us that's right uh, arguably he did try in the old testament god did speak to all the people of israel all at once and and when he spoke to them when he broadcast his message to all of them they all heard it from the sky mm. do you remember their reaction it's like it, it, yeah it, well actually stop it, it no no it's too much ra- we can't take it exactly exactly why because actually god wanted to communicate and moses was here as a prophet as medium right to communicate but for them it was broadcast oh no it's too much so stop it just yeah, just when, work with when him. god spoke directly they said no communicate right. through moses because right. we are too scared yeah, yeah. and it, it, sometimes we we believe that the methods would do it mm-hmm. and i'm always reminded that if if god just wanted the knowledge of his second coming to happen he mm-hmm. would come up at the sky he would speak and everybody would know that would be but enough. then it would be out of fear yeah transformation out of fear mm. is not sustainable yeah um it's only love that can truly transform someone eternally mm-hmm. so that's probably why okay let's end with some of the exciting things that you are doing at hope channel mm. i know that you are that you are about to launch a a movie um right. distributed through secular channels mm-hmm. through secular distributors 
Uh, they're all excited about it. You have film festivals that are canceling their other films to showcase mm -hmm. this film. That's Tell right. me more about The Hopeful. Well, uh, before I go to Hopeful, um, what I am excited about, well, definitely I'm excited about Hopeful, but this is just an outcome of changed strategies at Hope Channel. Yes, we are a television network, but we are more than TV. Um, we are comprehensive media ministry using all the, all the different formats and platforms and tools what relates to video. So we have a, we have a great uh, ministry, Adventist World Radio, and they are working with all the different ways of distribution what relates audio. But um, everything what relates to video is what Hope Channel now is doing. So in the past, Hope Channel was so much on TV that there was no TV department. You don't need it, right? Because all you do is TV. However, now, three years ago, we went through a major restructuring and TV became only one of the activities, one of the strategies. Mm. So now we have television distribution department because that's not all we do. And then we have digital distribution department. And I'm so excited that, um, well, by the time this will be released, uh, we will have already digital evangelism uh, coordinator. Dig and uh, we are very focused on digital evangelism and we develop tools and strategies to equip all the world network and the church uh, with media tools for digital evangelism. And then we have, and, and, and in that space, I want to thank you, Sam, you personally and all the communication department for collaboration on Heroes. Oh, because, that's exciting. Because Heroes is a part of that de department's strategy. That's right. And, digital and distribution. We just give you the game and you guys do amazing things with it. We just passed half a million downloads. Praise God. Uh, but that's, that's what you are doing so with your it's, experts. It's so fantastic. I, I like this collaboration and I think we could talk more about collaborations and how it works well. But uh, third department we created is Hope Studios. And Hope Studios is actually the main focus of Hope Studios is to develop and distribute movies, films. Like, like cinema movies, not, yeah. not you know, right. no, no, YouTube no. movies. No, 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 like, like cinema movies. And then to put them there, you know, cinema platforms and, uh, and then on uh, streaming platforms. Um, like Netflix and, and Disney and exactly. well, not, maybe not Disney, uh, there'll be yeah, Disney, they have... And they have a distribution too, obviously, yes. Right, right, right. And uh, and just recently, for example, before I go to Hopeful Back, recently we were able to provide service to one of our network channels. They, they created great film, or actually series of films, um, called Encounters. It's our Hope uh, Media, Hope Media Europe uh, Media Center in Germany. Um, they invested money into it. They uh, developed this film. They took all the risk to develop it. So I just want to say thank you again for what they did. But here, Hope Studios was able to bring this product to Sony and to say, hey, you know what? We have the, here the great, great series of films. Would you consider putting it on one of your platforms like, like uh, Pureflix? And when they uh, reviewed it, uh, screened it, they said, wow, this is really great product. We like it. And uh, and now, actually, it was released earlier this uh, this month. It was released on Pureflix. Is that right? And two weeks ago, when I was in Germany, they told me they have already feedback from Pureflix viewers. Okay. Just a week or two after the, the, the release, you know? Wow. So you see, Hope Channel is not only feeding with programs 24 seven channel. That, that's not our goal. Uh, that's not what we are dedicated to. Yes, this is important. We want to do it in the best way, in the professional way, but um, our main goal is to reach out, to build relationships, wherever people are. Are they in cinema? Great. Are they on Netflix? Very good. Are they on um, other platforms, streaming platforms? We build relationships there, where they are. Fantastic. And that's what Hope Channel is about. And yeah, go ahead. No, please. And, and the hopeful, the hopeful is uh, 
Yeah, that's um, th that's something what makes me excited because actually this is the film that tells the story of God's miraculous work establishing Adventist movement. So that there is no better story that would, you know, tell to someone who never know about Adventism to know, oh, this is how it, you know, established, it was established, this movement, and how God was active and how God did all these miracles, you know, to, to, to call these leaders and to encourage them and to give them passion for the mission and to send evangelism around the world. And so the story starts with Gian Andrews going on the ship to the Europe with his kids. And, uh, and he's telling the story of how God actually, you know, called this movement. And Sam, let me tell you and uh, our viewers something. What actually is kind of probably even expected from me, but my colleagues, they were a little bit... Um, um, I would say surprised that non-Adventists are more excited about this movie as our internal audience. I mean, it's not our audience, but as Adventists. Why? Because we as Adventists, we say, yeah, well, we heard about this story. You know, many, many it's times. too familiar for we us. We know that. That's yeah, fine. The miracle yeah. is familiar. So, you know, they would look at this film and say, oh, is it accurate enough in these details and, you know, in all these things which are important for us as Adventists? But people that never heard the story are blown away. That's the point. What, what it tells us, Sam, we just have to admit we need to be more humble to understand that um, we can't identify correctly, accurately enough what works, what doesn't work. Just because we can't, we are not the audience. We are not representing the audience we want to reach out. This is why we are going through research. We are investing a lot in research. And by the way, just one more example. Recently, we we were exploring one more program um, and it will be, this project now will be released very soon, but um, I don't want to reveal all the details now. And then we said, okay, let's build two focus groups. One of our donors, Adventists, and then one of the target audience, like representatives of the target audience, non-Adventists, those who probably I mean, even yes, don't they believe. Had very different opinions. And in this program, they say often about relationships with Jesus and what does it mean and so on, you know, Sabbath. And so what was the feedback from our uh, donors? They say, yeah, that's good, but uh, it's too religious. They will not, you know, the audience will not be interested in this. It's too religious. Next week, we have, uh, we have the um, focus group with the representatives of target audience. And they say, we love it. <laughs> this is what actually we, we would watch it. We would share it with our friends. Um, the way how you present Jesus, we, were, we never thought about this. Isn't that interesting? It, so we are incapable of deciding whether mm -hmm. something is powerful or exactly. not. Exactly. And, and often the creators are. Uh, but they're not the sponsors. The creators mm -hmm. are the producers, mm -hmm. the person who had the mm -hmm. ideas, like they have a an instinct exactly. for it and exactly. they think it will work out. Yeah. But it's very difficult to convince everyone else in a network that yeah. this is also the case. So This is why we have a process. Yeah. The process that kind of protects that creativity and protects from people like me, you know, because we as officers, we... We are toxic for creative process. We kill every creativity with because we know everything. At least we think we know, you know. So uh, what we created, we created a process where we actually isolated the process from ourselves. Huh. Yes, we have a word to say on the end of the process of development process, where we have already data, evidences, feedback, 
you know, but it's the studies data that guides your decision, not your bias or your exactly. artistic or exactly. your artistic yeah. uh, interests. Yeah. So where, where creatives they can they can develop their ideas. We call it mission passport process. They develop it. They we want them to be responsible as well, right? Not just be creative, but we ask them, hey, what what do you think will be the outcome of this? How you want to measure actually what you do here, but then they go through all the development process and sometimes we we go with focus groups sometimes we go with studies like recently we were about to develop a health brand and then we said well we know everything about health right who knows better than than admitters about health but then we said no no our principles be humble and admit you don't know let's see let's ask let's let's learn and you know, the study analytics innovation department provided just blown away us. You know, we we discovered things we were we, we were expecting this, but not in that scale, and it reshaped completely our strategy. Just we said no, we will not do this. We will do this because this is what data says. Mission passport, Vyacheslav, is one of the greatest innovations I've ever seen in mission or work, and I think that if you can communicate this properly to local churches, pastors, mm. even conferences, I can imagine a local church board making decisions for evangelism projects mm -hmm. and appropriation of mm -hmm. funds and even sermon series or what have you based yeah. on the mission passport process. Right. I think it is, it is, if you can manage to do two things, one, make it simple enough mm -hmm. Um, and to make it known enough, and we we'll try and help you as much as we can with both of Thank those you. if you need. Uh, but I think it will be a a incredible tool mm. in the hands of from local church pastors to conferences, unions, divisions, entities, everyone. We're going to try and adapt it to the general conference mm. side of 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 our operation here because it it's a very simple concept. Create the best you can to fulfill the mission, document right. that in the process and let the data decide yep. whether it was successful or not. Actually, yeah, you're right. Data data decides whether it was successful or not. But I want to make it very clear here that Mission Passport is built on the, on the conviction that data informs our decisions. But the gospel and the way, I mean, the, the gospel and the mission is not data-driven. It's driven by, the, by God. So the data doesn't make the decisions. The data informs, but the Holy Spirit through exactly. us makes the decisions. Exactly, exactly. That's the a great gospel, distinction. Gospel is not, the gospel cannot be determined by data. Gospel is determined by heaven, period. We don't... You know, we don't compromise the gospel. We don't compromise the message. The message is determined by God, period. Now, the way how to communicate it, what strategies to use, what platforms, what formats, uh, we use data to be informed in our decision-making process. And that's the philosophy of Mission Passport. Excellent. Vyacheslav, I would like you to have some final thoughts for people that are interested in finding out more about Hope Channel. Mm especially those that believe that the vision that you have described is what the future will will be and maybe they want to help financially mm. maybe they want to to give some some resources small or great to help fulfill that mission mm -hmm. uh, you need all of the funds you can get your hands on to make that go faster and more powerfully so final thoughts about that and then if you could pray for us well um first of all, I think it's important uh, to remind again that mission is not something what belongs to Hope Channel, neither to the church. Mission is God's. And as Henry Blackaby says in one of his books, the best thing we can ever do is to find out where God is at work and to join him there. That's best thing we can ever do. And I want to encourage whoever watches this podcast to take a closer look at Hope Channel in your country, in your part of the world, 
and see where guys is, God is at work and join him here at Hope Channel with whatever resources you have. Either you are expert in certain things or God you gave you financial resources or God gave you gift of prayer or God gave you some other gifts. Please join God where he is at work. And Hope Channel is a platform, is an open platform where everybody who wants to experience what God is doing, where God is at work, everybody can join Hope Channel um, and be part of God's mission here. So we welcome everyone. We are not, uh, we are not a media ministry that is just, you know, um, protected with the walls and only people who are officially hired here, they can do something. No, we have a big network of volunteers, of uh, um, experts, um, those prayer, who, warriors. prayer warriors, those who advise us or, or help us in, in various directions and donors who support. And you will be blessed when you will become a part of what God is doing at Hope Channel. Thank you. Pray for us. Father, thank you so much for loving us and taking care of us. So much that you put together a plan, plan of salvation, mission plan, to bring us home. You paid a big price. Um, life of your son. But we have this great privilege to join you in your mission and to be part of what you are doing already and uh, to be part of this end time movement to prepare the world for your second coming. Lord, thank you for all the blessings we as World Church are experiencing. Experiencing your guidance, presence of your Holy Spirit, Thank you, Lord, for all the dedicated church members around the world. Thank you for opening great opportunities serving you, Lord. Please guide and bless us and help us to be humble tools in your hands for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yes, just love. Thank you for joining me and taking the time. Oh, thank you, Sam. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Excellent. And thank you for watching or listening as well. I hope you found it informative and engaging. Please consider subscribing so you never miss an episode. By subscribing, you will have access to all of our past and our future episodes. You can find us on all major podcast platforms and YouTube as well. Just search for ANN in depth. We will see you in the next episode.